Hello, my name is Grant Yocum. Um, I'm going to be in your instructor for Phil 1100 uh, in uh, fall semester 2018. Uh, the purpose of this video is to introduce myself, to go over uh, the structure of the class, the assignments, uh, the course policies, um, the general timetable, and more or less what the goals of the class are. So, uh, more or less, I will be going through your course syllabus, which is posted to Moodle right now. Uh, you should um, read that very closely. I don't know if you're hard copy or what. Um, I print these things and I read them over and I keep them handy if I'm on the other end of these things. Uh, so, I've been at Oakland University for um, a long time. Uh, it's uh, winter uh, 2005 I started here. Uh, I'm a Canadian commuter, um, uh, which is why I teach these online courses. Uh, keeps um, the travel time and the international commute to sort of a minimum. Um, I've been doing these uh, online courses since 2009, so it's they're becoming a bit of a well-oiled machine, though I am adding uh, sort of experimental aspects as I, in, in the process of developing these courses, hope to improve them. So, um, uh, most of um, our meetings are going to be non-meeting form. Um, I'm going to be posting videos like this one related to the content of the course. Um, you're going to be engaging with discussion forums. You're going to be um, writing quizzes on each section that we um, complete, and, uh, and I, I've divided the course into three sections. Each will have a test attached to it. Um, these have to be uh, by the um, course catalog, gen ed requirements, and cross-cutting capacities. These have to be writing courses, um, and one of the ways that uh, we are going to satisfy these um, gen ed uh, requirements is to just in general get you to practice your writing and to develop your ability to uh, write clearly and persuasively about ideas right? which is a very important very important skill uh, especially since much of our correspondence now is in written form rather than face-to-face -face, um, sort of verbal arguments. So um, that is uh, what we have to do. Um, so I'll introduce myself a little bit. Like I say, I'm a Canadian. Um, I have two undergraduate degrees. Uh, one is a BA in English and the other is an honors in philosophy and I have two graduate degrees. Um, so I did my master's in philosophy at Brock University um, with a focus on um, sort of a weird approach to um, ethical theory. And uh, just recently, uh, I completed a PhD in interdisciplinary humanities, also at Brock University in Canada. If you're looking for it, it's about 20 minutes out of Niagara Falls, but on the Canadian side. So, um, it, it, I put a lot of work into understanding theory throughout my career. Um, what I've uh, started doing myself lately is um, theorizing activist practice and deindustrializing cities. So I've been looking at Windsor and Detroit and Hamilton and Flint and Buffalo and St. Catharines and et cetera, et cetera. Cities like that are interesting because I think they rep represent a very interesting historical moment when a city is moving from one thing to uh, defining itself as something else. And I think there's potential for um, progressive social change in those moments. Um, there, of course, this course is not um, a form for me to talk about what I do. Um, it's a form for me to introduce you uh, to the history of Western philosophy, which I'm very well versed in. As I say, I've been doing this um, since what, winter 2005 for Oakland University, so that's a long time. Um, so, the course catalog description, um, and this is sort of the box that the course has to fit in, um, tells me it's a study of the main types of problems of uh, Western philosophy. The readings are chosen to illustrate the development of Western thought from the ancient Greeks to the pres uh, present. It's offered every um, semester and satisfies the gen ed uh, knowledge exploration area. Um, and uh, there are specific things 
um, that uh, this course has to do in order to um, satisfy this gen ed uh, requirement in Western civilization knowledge exploration. So, um, uh, the, the, to introduce students to the important historical texts uh, in philosophy, that is to know the important philosophical ideas of European and American, uh, American uh, culture. So, uh, these will be your textbooks for the course, and before you groan too much, um, we are reading portions of each of these texts. I'll say more about those texts in a moment. Um, the next thing we have to do is to develop students' facility in using logic or reasoning more generally to analyze and evaluate philosophical arguments. All right, so um, I'm going to have you reasoning through this material along with the theorist in question. Um, to develop students' uh, facility and um, uh, to, to show students how philosophical theories have developed over time. Um, and uh, when I discuss the texts, uh, it basically I'm building a historical arc. I'm starting with the ancients, we take a brief sojourn in modern philosophy and then move to what might be considered um, early postmodern philosophy. So it is about 24, 2500 years of Western philosophy that um, we will be engaging with. And then finally, uh, to develop students' facility and clear presentation of arguments in writing. So in order to uh, satisfy that requirement, we have to write. So, and um, throughout the course, um, it, it basically, what I'm going to be doing is spot checking your understanding of uh, the arguments that um, you're going to be presented. I will be offering a lot of supplementary material to accompany the uh, the main arguments that we are engaging with. So um, it will be engaging not only with the arguments, but arguments about the arguments, right? um, which I hope to do in a fun and interesting kind of way. Um, to better engage you with this. Right? Um, so I'll be spot checking your understanding of what's going on and uh, then at three points through the semester I'll ask you to uh, more formally write something in the way of essay responses to questions. Um, that, that, that I, I, I will direct. Um, it, I'll, I'll isolate a, a, a passage and ask you to interpret. Um, I will isolate a problematic within the material and ask you to critically evaluate that sort of thing. Right. Um, so uh, that is uh, what we will be doing. And um, it's as I've developed these courses. I, it's important that you have um, some sort of a space to, in sort of rougher terms, work out your understanding of this material and dialogue with one another. Because it's, it's all well and good that you've got me to guide you through this material, but the best resource you have in these classes is each other. Right? So uh, discussion forums. Uh, will be a big part of not only your grade, but um, on top of that, uh, your study time and resources for this material. So, um, there are six textbooks for this class, um, and uh, I've picked only sort of important texts throughout the history of Western philosophy, uh, which I should pause to note is um, historically sort of a male sort of engagement, right? Um, it's skewed that way because of uh, bad laws and bad cultural presuppositions, but nonetheless, um, it, it, it's, it's changing in terms of contemporary philosophy very well. Uh, the past 150 years or so have been very, very interesting for female scholarship, um, and some of the most important female philosophers, er, er, philosophers working today are female. So um, don't, don't let this collection of um, dead men um, scare you away from philosophy if, 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 if that's something you're interested in pursuing. Um, just the fact that this is skewed in this direction uh, represents a, a lot of conflicted moments within um, our, our, our history. 
right? So, um, and in fact, uh, the second theorist that we'll be engaging in is one of the first theorists that we know of that argued in a robust form that women should be engaged politically and in fact engage in philosophy and theory, right? Which then serves to help guide culture, right? So, um, it, so that's there. That's 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 going to be sort of the cloud that's hanging um, behind uh, these these arguments that we're engaging in. Um, so uh, these texts are basically some of the seminal texts in the history of Western philosophy, though, and um, we'll be gazing at them critically as well as gazing at them with um, a hope to understand them. So um, it, I'm hoping uh, a, a number of themes emerge uh, throughout this class. Um, I've tried to sort of pick up on interesting themes that, that might engage you uh, in this material um, as sort of a vehicle to develop an understanding of some of the more important movements uh, throughout the history of Western philosophy. And the first major text that we will uh, be engaging in, with is Plato's Five Dialogues, of which we will engage with two of these dialogues, the Apology and the Crito. Um, there's another version of the same book called The Trial and Death of Socrates. If you wind up with that one, that one is fine. Um, all we're doing is reading The Apology and uh, the credo, uh, which is the apology is uh, as unapologetic as you're going to come across. It's basically Socrates' trial defense when he's brought up on charges of corrupting the youth and not believing in the gods of the state. Um, uh, more or less, uh, these charges by Socrates' assessment amount to uh, the fact that Athenians find him annoying and just want him to sit down and shut up. Um, Anyhow, I hate to ruin the story for you, but the trial does not quite go Socrates' way, uh, and he is uh, sentenced to death by, by drinking hemlock. Right? And then we find in the Crito um, an argument, an important sort of political argument. Both of these are important political arguments that, that sort of ground our understanding of democracy, even in a contemporary setting. Right? Uh, because it's, it's the model for our North American or modern democracies come straight from Athenian democracy. Um, and a lot of the principles that we'll be engaging with here um, it, it are relevant today in our modern contexts, plural, because I'm Canadian. Um, so, um, nonetheless, right, the credo uh, basically, right, it, I like to frame it this way. Right. Um, the apology is generally a robust defense of rights tied to the proper functioning of a democratic republic, a city-state in this case. Right. Uh, whereas the credo, I like to think of it in terms of duties. Right. So if we hope the city-state or the democratic republic to, um, if we hope for it to function, then there are, if wherever there are rights, there are duties as well, right? So Socrates spells out sort of a generalized but important argument, um, which introduces the notion of um, the social contract. Right? So uh, that's where uh, we will be beginning, um, and it, broadly we can think of Socrates' philosophies, that which is centered around uh, justice. So Socrates, and really he's the first philosopher we know anything robust about, right? So he's the first robustly knowable Western philosophy. Um, shortly after I post this video, I will be giving you sort of a primer on pre-Socratic philosophy leading up to uh, the point where Socrates is arguing. Um, I consider that background, I'm not testing you on it, but nonetheless it's an important sort of um, touchstone. Uh, for at least the first theor three theorists that we're engaging with. Uh, but nonetheless, Socrates, uh, because his student Plato wound up uh, giving an account of Socrates' position in um, this book, The Five Dialogues, written by Plato. Right? So the Socrates, we are getting, uh, we're getting it by way of Plato. Now, um, just to confuse things, when we move on to our discussion of Plato, I've selected a text by the name of the, the Fabris, right? 
um, which is an interesting text which basically engages with three lines of argument. Um, the first two can be seen as sort of a preamble, right? And then the third line of argument is interesting uh, since we get Plato's um, robust position. Uh, so um, it's it basically, um, you're going to get confused because in Plato's Phaedrus, which I'm going to refer to as Plato, uh, there's going to be a character Socrates who is making a lot of the arguments. I'm on some interpretive ground here. There's some, it, there's some question whether the Socrates we get from the early dialogues is actually Socrates or just Plato uh, using the name of his, his, his mentor as um, sort of a mouthpiece. And sort of as though there's a sock puppet for uh, Plato's ideas. Uh, that is clearly the case in the later works, but nonetheless, uh, the Socrates that we get in the five dialogues seems to hold a distinct position than the character Socrates that we get in uh, Plato's more mature works. Right? So, um, for example, in the early works, Socrates is the wisest man in Athens because he knows that he knows nothing, right? Now, what you'll get from Plato in the later works is a Socrates who thinks through some form of divine madness, right? He's going to be able to, albeit imperfectly, come to some sort of understanding of the truth, right? So, um, it, the positions are distinct. Anyhow, about this book. I like this book because, well, one, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Two, it's, 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 it's going to grab you because it's about something we all care about, which is love, romantic love, physical love, sex, yes, right? Um, it, so uh, effectively, this is a drive or desire that we all experience to some extent, right? So also it's about ethics. Right? and how best to relate to this desire and uh, how best to constrain it in order to have a robust kind of relationship that we might call love that's not abusive or objectifying. Right? So um, while he's introducing this, I like this because there are other books that I could use for Plato. I don't have any of them right here with me, but nonetheless, we could read like 10 books of the Republic and get the same sort of epistemology, ethics, and metaphysics. I'll break down those, those, those terms for you just quickly now. Um, epistemology is theory of knowledge. Uh, metaphysics is the theory of the underlying nature of truth, and ethics is a theory pertaining to action. Right, so um, it, we're going to get all three from Plato here. So this is the first really robust system system of philosophy. Um, Socrates took some very interesting positions, but from what we have of Socrates, we don't have a really robust system. It's it, the way I teach it. It's epistemology uh, underscoring ethics. Right, um, whereas this is a robust system. Now, we're lingering a lot in ancient philosophy. So this is the way the course is going to be um, laid out. We study Socrates, we study Plato, that's the end of section one, we have a test. And then we move on to the student of Plato by the name of Aristotle, or if you want to pronounce it actually properly, it's Aristoteus, but everybody says Aristotle. Um, we're going to move on to this book of Aristotle's, um, who is, like I say, the, the prize student in Plato's uh, first university in the Western world, the Academy. Right? Um, but they had a falling out and a major disagreement, um, which we'll discuss as I'm introducing Aristotle. Um, with regard to Plato's metaphysics. Aristotle is going to come up with a different philosophical system that has accounts of um, epistemology, metaphysics, and ethics. Right? Now, um, I like this book too. It's one of my favorites uh, from the history of Western philosophy because it 
engages with the question of happiness. You can't not want to be happy. Right? It's something we desire for its own sake, which we never desire for the sake of something else. And why do you want to be happy? The question doesn't even make sense. Right? And which, if we had it, would be so complete and self-sufficient that we could want nothing else. Right? So it's a notion that winds up being the ultimate end or reason why it is that we do all of the other things that we do. Why are your friends your friends? Because you want to be happy. Why do you train for the job that you're training for? Because you want to be happy. Why do you study the things? Why do you engage your free time? Happiness winds up being the ultimate reason for everything. Now, define it. That's the it's sort of embarrassing moment for a lot of people because it's, if Aristotle's right, most people, even though it's the reason why it is we do all of the other things we do, it's why we wear the clothes we want, it's why we date the people we do, it's why we wear our hair the way that we do, it's why we listen to the music that we listen to, it's etc, etc, etc. Very few of us have bothered in any systematic way of trying to define happiness. Right? So um, that is what Aristotle is going to do. And don't worry, um, we're not going through all 10 books of the Nicomachean Ethics. We're going through books one, two, and the first section of three. It's, 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 it's in your reading list So on the syllabus, so don't worry about it. Um, Following Aristotle, we are going to turn to one of the most important works in political philosophy um, from the modern period, a guy by the name of Thomas Hobbes. Remember, I dropped a reference to something called a social contract in um, Socrates uh, in the Credo from the Five Dialogues? Well, Hobbes is a social contract theorist, right? but he's also what I would call a realist, right? uh, with not a pessimistic, but nonetheless a really sort of naturalist view of human nature. Right? We're simple creatures who are led by desire. Well, if that's the case, if we're primarily, and by Hobbes' argument, only led by desire, how is it that we can come to a stable political arrangement that will produce a commonwealth, right? A situation in which we all get to share uh, the bounty of collaboration and cooperation if we're all led by self-interest, right? Hobbes has an answer. It's an interesting answer. It can also be a very dangerous answer. So um, this is an important work um, that, 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 that comes up in contemporary uh, political theory today. In fact, there's still debates about uh, Thomas Hobbes. Right? Uh, this book also uh, got Hobbes in um, a lot of trouble. Right? Uh, it was burned. Right? It was blamed for plagues. It was burned for fires that, uh, that, that, that spread through and, and, and destroyed much of London at the time. But nonetheless, um, this is the only text in this course which is written in English. It's actually, it, the original text was, the primary text is written in English, right? Everything else that we have is translation, and it, as we'll discuss throughout this course, a translation is an act of interpretation. So effectively, what we're interpreting in everything else is an interpretation of an interpretation through translation. This is straight from the horse's mouth. Unfortunately, it's written in Old English, so it's going to be a little hooked on phonics to um, get through. We're going to have to sound out kind of what he's talking about, but nonetheless, it's very doable. Um, I've been using this, this book for at least 12 years, so... Um, it's, it's approachable. Then we're turning to um, the postmodern period. Okay, so we do Aristotle and Hobbes, and then we have another test. Right? And then we move to our final section in which we engage with what I'll hesitantly call postmodern philosophers. Right? Um, 
existentialists, or at least proto-existentialists. Um, a guy by the name of Soren Kierkegaard, who was a religious existentialist. Um, and uh, in this section, what we're going to talk to um, is uh, what we're going to talk to about, right, are important sort of aspects of the human condition and what the primary focus of her life ought to be. Now, he's a religious existentialist, so he's trying to um, reconcile faith with the demands of existence. And so that's what he's up to there. And um, I don't know what you've heard on the street about a guy by the name of Friedrich Nietzsche. Uh, most of what you hear on the street is wrong. Uh, we will be engaging uh, with one dialogue from the portable Nietzsche, which is huge. Um, but we're looking at a very small section of um, a very upbeat book by the name of uh, Twilight of the Idols, right? which harkens way back to uh, the beginning of the course. Um, the first major section in Twilight of the Idols is called uh, The Problem of Socrates. Right? Um, so effectively, um, what Nietzsche is going to offer is sort of a sustained critique of Western philosophy and introduce you to a lot of um, presuppositions and prejudices of the philosophers. And he's basically working on developing one line of argument um, in reaction to Socrates and Plato, but nonetheless throughout the history of Western philosophy. Hobbes is, oddly Hobbes and Nietzsche almost, almost agree, right? But what Nietzsche is going to do um, with these propositions is quite different. Um, I, I myself have a specialty in Nietzschean philosophy, um, wrote a dissertation that engaged heavily with this material, um, and I use it in my own writing today as well. Uh, but nonetheless, um, it's so basically, right, Plato's going to set up a system that more or less gets the dialogue and frames the dialogue of Western philosophy, and then Nietzsche is going to come along and knock it down. Right. It sounds like sort of um, you know a, a circle more than an arc, but nonetheless, I think um, throughout the history of Western philosophy, we've gained we've gained as much from errors as we have um, from insights, and so. Uh, uh, that is um, going to be um, the, the textual material. I rely on these texts quite a bit, right? So get these texts. Um, I, I know it, I try to pick as cheaply as possible. Um, the first three are Hackett translations, uh, which are older but good translations with good notation. Um, uh, which are designed to be affordable for students. Um, and the last three, um, two of them are Penguin editions, and um, the, the, the Nietzsche and the Hobbes are Penguin editions, so they should not be um, wildly um, expensive. And in fact, this is a used copy of the portable Nietzsche that I paid five bucks for right, at a used bookstore. Um, if you're worried about money and textbooks, try Abe Books, Abe, A-B-E-B-O-O-K-S. Right, just Google it. And um, you should be able to, uh, they ship free within the States, which is awesome. And you should be able to pick these books up fairly, fairly, like obscenely cheaply, right? So, um, so those are gonna be your texts for the course. Um, all of them are required and all of them are in the Oakland University Bookstore. Um, and uh, that is um, the first part of this introduction to the course. Now, um, you probably want to know how you get an A in this course. Well, it's, um, it, there are basically three types of things that I'm doing to um, account for your grade. Um, there are going to be, like I say, section tests um, at 20% each for a total of 60%. 60% of your grade, more than half of your grade, are going to be these section tests. Um, how these work is um, I post a series of directed questions. Um, how many did I say here? Uh, boo, 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 boo. Let me see. On the third page of your um, syllabus, I've got a little thing. This course is divided into three um, sections consisting of two theorists. 
Each of the tests for this course um, will test the section we're working on only, so it's not comprehensive. So like I say, we do Socrates, Plato, we have a test, you're done with Socrates, Plato. We do Aristotle, Hobbes, we have a test, you're done with them, right? And the same goes for the last of it, right? So I'm not going to ask you to um, be responsible for the entire course at the end of the course, though I hope you will have insights as a result of taking the course at the end of the course. So, um, there, there. Uh, boo, 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 boo. Um, each test will consist of questions totaling 20 possible um, points. Typically, uh, four fairly substantial short answer questions. Short answer is still an essay, right? So you, you've got to give me at least three paragraphs um, of account for each of these questions. So um, typically four, so that's five points each, asking you to define a term, make an important distinction, critically assess a central concept or argument uh, related to the particular philosopher. Uh, questions will be um, designed to test both reading comprehension and a more of general understanding of the ideas that we've studied. Um, the readings, the video material are all fair game for this, right? So. Um, if I post a video, I say, well, in the video by Rick Roderick, um, he argues blah, blah, blah. You engage with this argument and evaluate this claim in terms of your understanding of the material or something along those lines. Um, so these tests will be um, posted to Moodle at the end of each section covered by um, the, the, the test. Um, and I indicate the dates below. Uh, there's an important date section on the syllabus and um, there is a tentative schedule, which again has those important dates. So um, you, you know when everything's due. Um, you can plan your time around this. Um, it, it, your responses should be submitted um, uh, through Moodle. The due dates for the quiz are indicated below. Um, so it's you'll have time for these. I give you at least a week, right? So um, the first one uh, of these tests at the end of section one is going to be posted to Moodle uh, Wednesday, October 3rd. And then it is due Wednesday, October 10th by noon, right? I've got these quizzes designed to pop up, or these tests designed to pop up for you um, at, at noon, and you'll have noon till uh, the following week. So you'll have seven days with the questions, with your books, uh, with the forums, and uh, with your notes, and all of the resources at your disposal. You see, I do these um, so that it gives you time and a chance to learn. Right? If I thought you were going to be awesome at philosophy right off the bat, well, you wouldn't need to take the course, would you? Right? So, um, it's, I try to give you every chance with this material, right? Um, I've also added these short quizzes at the end of uh, each section. So Socrates, towards the end of that, at, at the beginning of the Socrates section, it, you'll have access to a quiz. Now, to take the quiz, what you'll have to do is watch the videos that I've posted to Moodle. It won't let you take the quiz unless you've clicked on the links for those videos and it's marked as complete. Now, um, these are very, very, very short quizzes. I try to be as clear and direct as possible. Um, if you've done your work, you should get perfect on these quizzes. Right? I'm not trying to be tricky. Right? Uh, like, so, um, they're either going to be multiple choice or true and false. Uh, the quizzes are timed. I give you 15 minutes. Um, and uh, like they will become available um, at the start of each new section and due um, at the end of... like So when we're done talking about Socrates, that's when we're done having quizzes about Socrates. Right? So... Um, I give you the example in the quizzes right up. For Socrates, the quiz will appear Sunday, November, uh, September 9th, and will be due Friday, September 21st. All right, so that's a couple of weeks with a 15 minute quiz. All right, so that's, that's um, and hopefully you'll find them very straightforward. Um, this is also 30% um, of your grade, 5% uh, for each of these quizzes. You'll have six of them, so that's 30. Uh, that you will get back immediately, 
right? Whereas uh, your section tests, these take a little bit longer to grade because I'm trying to critically assess your writing and I'm having you give me substantial responses. I need time to think it through. I don't want to rush and miss anything that's of value um, within, uh, within your responses um, and in grading and feedback, the grading of assignments, the tests, um, given that these uh, assignments are substantial and writing intensive and require substantial feedback, they take a good deal of time to grade. Students should expect assignments to be graded with substantial comments within two weeks of the submission. All responses will be graded for clarity of your response completeness, understanding uh, exhibited in your use of the course material, and the strength of your argument or insight into the material in question. Sometimes I ask you to present an argument. Well, we evaluate these arguments. There are structures to evaluate arguments. I'll go into this, don't you worry. All right. Um, so you'll know how you are being assessed. Uh, I will try to be as clear. I, I cannot help it. I give substantial feedback. I, I give you a lot in response to um, your, 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 your responses to my questions. So you write a little bit. Sometimes I even write more than you do in your response to what you, and that's, that's not bad. I'm still trying to teach you if I'm doing that, right? I want you to understand how you're assessed and I want you to have the tools to go forward and do better in the future. Um, or sometimes it's just an interesting argument and I want to talk to you about. Right? So um, it, that's what we're doing. Um, in terms of assessment more generally for this course, if you have any questions about how you're assessed, come see me, send me an email, um, and uh, we can go from there. Now, um, these quiz so section tests, three in total, totaled 60% of your grade. Moodle quizzes, six in total, 5% each total, 30%. That's 90% of your grade right there. Fairly straightforward. The last 10%, um, uh, we will have discussion forums. So what I'm going to do is open up a discussion forum for each of these theorists. So Socrates will have a Socrates one. Plato will have a Plato one. Aristotle will da 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 You get the idea. Uh, what I'm going to do is ask you a specific directed sort of question to get the ball rolling in terms of your discussion of this material. I'm also going to record a brief video discussing why I think the question that I'm asking you is an important or a good one. But keep in mind that is the beginning of um, the dialogue, right? It's not the end of it. If you're having trouble reading a passage in Nietzsche or trying to figure out what Kierkegaard means by anxiety or figuring out what the laws of nature are in Hobbes, it's perfectly acceptable and will get you grades, way to engage with these forums to say, I really don't understand what Aristotle means by moral virtue. It seems to be something like this, but can anybody help me clarify? That, that is a great way to use these forums because I think of these forums in terms of your travel through this class as sort of a rough work section, right? It, where you hash out your arguments and think through the material and I, I give you grades for it. it. It helps your performance in the class to just think through and talk through this material with your fellow students. All right. So um, each of these series are going to have one of these. You're expected to engage with each of them um, at least once. All right. You don't do that, uh, it's going to affect this 10% of your grade. Before you scoff at 10% of your grade, it's enough to turn an A into a B, a B into a C, a C into a D, or the other way around, a C into a B, a B into an A. All right. You don't do them, you're in real trouble you do do them, it can really be a benefit to your grade. Right? So, um, plus, it's going to help you with the other material in this class if you're timely and engaged with these forums. Um, that said, what I do on these forums is once the Socrates forum is open, stays open all semester. 
Same goes for Plato, Aristotle, Hobbes, Kierkegaard, Nietzsche. Right? All of these forums are going to be open for the entire semester. And I do this for you know, two reasons. One, to give you control over that 10% of your grade, right up until the last minute of the class. And two, because you're still going to be learning and realizing and having insights about the material towards the end of the class. Like I say, the first major section of Nietzsche's Twilight of the Idols is called The Problem of Socrates. There's a critique of Plato in here, right? So, I mean, right, it, these guys are in dialogue with one another. The forums are designed for you to be in dialogue about these guys, right? Um, so, uh, hopefully that's both enjoyable and helpful to you. If you want to respond in terms of videos, I'm good with that too. Um, if that's something you're, it's, if you prefer talking to typing, um, in some ways I prefer talking to typing. I can be visual when I'm presenting material. Check out my Play-Doh video by the time we get there, you'll see what I mean. Um, so, um, it, it, that's an option for you as well, um, but nonetheless, um, Engage with the forms. That's the idea, All right? And uh, so that's 20% uh, each for a total of 60 on your tests, 5% each for a total of 30 on your forums, and 10% uh, for uh, for quizzes rather, 10% for forums. So if you're good at math, that adds up to 100. And um, I've set it up so that great book um, it will be set up to 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 keep that math nice and simple for you as well. Um, now feedback. Um, it's I've already engaged with the um, the assignments on feedback, like the uh, the section tests. Uh, these section tests, like I say, they do take a lot of time, and my goal is to work with you on improving your writing. So I write a lot, you write a lot, we all write a lot, and it takes some time. The old-fashioned way seems to still be best. Right? Um, so about two weeks is my turnaround. Sometimes I'm late, sometimes I'm early. If I'm early, we can all have a sigh of relief and a bit of a party. If I'm late, I, I apologize because these semesters really keep rolling. Right. Uh, Moodle quizzes, uh, feedback's instant, uh, the discussion form since they're ongoing. Uh, what I'm going to do is give you a tentative um, sort of batch of feedback, um, middle of uh, the semester. Um, but nonetheless, your grade will be calculated in with your final. Right. So uh, that's the way that's um, going to go. Uh, and before you even ask, there's no extra credit in this class. I just, there's not enough time. There are a lot of you, there's only one of me. Right. So um, I cannot do extra credit. But I build in a lot of wiggle room into the structure of uh, the course as it is. Um, so. Instructional technology uh, used for this course, everything's on Moodle. You'll be viewing videos um, linked through Moodle um, to my YouTube channel and other sources. Um, uh, it's notes and handouts if I deem it necessary. I'll give you those through Moodle. Uh, course assignments through Moodle. Um, course content forums through Moodle. Um, and it's your responsibility to stay up to date on Moodle. Um, th this video came in an email to you um, and uh, along with the course syllabus, uh, which gives you a structure and a timeline for the course. Um, if anything changes, uh, you'll notice my timeline for the course says that it's tentative and I do that because life happens. I get it. Life happens. It's going to happen to you throughout the semester. It's going to happen to me throughout the semester. I have three-year-old twin girls, right? So life happens. Oh, believe me, life happens. Um, so, uh, effectively, uh, what you should do is keep your eye on the schedule and log into Moodle regularly. If I see you haven't logged into Moodle uh, in a while, I will probably send you an email to check in to make sure everything's okay. All right. um, but nonetheless, everything is on Moodle. Um, Moodle technical issues, that's not me, I'm not the tech guy. Um, 
uh, I, I give you contact information for um, e-learning and instructional support, uh, their phone number, and a link to submit a ticket on the course syllabus as well. Um, uh, if, you uh, if you require cl closed captioning of the video material, it's a feature in YouTube actually, and it's not bad. So um, you can just turn CC uh, closed captioning on, and most of the video material that I use for these courses is on YouTube. So that's right there for you. Um, and um, in terms of the time that I give you for these assignments, if you know, for example, the only sort of um, issue that I, I, I might anticipate is the timed quizzes. If you require additional time for a quiz, uh, please contact me and um, I'm in a position to offer that. It's by you know, creating an exception for, for, for somebody who goes through the DSS office and um, approaches me properly for that. So um, I try to be very accommodating with this, um, with this material. So, um, boo boo boo, um, and I'll give you the link to um, the Disability Services Office as well. All right. um, so um, there are two pages that you should print and maybe even just stick to your wall. Um, uh, the important dates and the tentative schedule. So you can follow right through that. This will tell you what's due when, what we're doing when. Um, so uh, I've got it um, in three sections with um, two subsections each. So the first section, weeks two and three, September 10th to 23rd are Socrates. Weeks four and five, um, September 24th to October 7th, that's Plato and um, all of your deadlines are there as well. I try to make this as clear and as handy as possible for you so that there are no surprises and you know what you should be doing when. Um, and I've tried to set up Moodle so that um, it sort of mimics the layout that I present you in this syllabus as well. All right. Um, so Sunday's new material will be popping up um, at the start of each section. Uh, you should expect it then, and then you've got two weeks to engage with them. So, um, ish. All right. Now, um, I suppose I should do this. This is the part of the uh, the welcome video I dislike uh, because it goes through all of my policies and makes me sound like a big fat jerk. Um, I have policies, and my policies section is so large on the second. Second, second page of your syllabus, the course policy section, is growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. And it's all, I have a policy only because I've had a problem in the past. So um, first off, plagiarism, uh, plagiarizing the work of others. And I'm quoting from um, the student handbook here. And I've given you a link to the policies and procedures section of your student handbook as well. Plagiarizing the work of others. Plagiarism is using someone else's work or ideas without giving that person credit. By doing this, a student is, in effect, claiming credit for someone else's thinking. Whether the student has read or heard the information used, the student must document the source of the information. When dealing with written sources, a clear distinction should be made. Blah, 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 blah. Read the policy. Um, the point is, there is a whole big bad world out there of, um, of information and sources, and God, you're encouraged to engage with them. I wrote a dissertation. It had over 6,000 references in it. Over 6,000, right? That's how you engage with the thoughts and ideas of other people. I mean, look at the bloody pile of books I ordered for this class. We're engaging with these people's ideas. This is not a no-touching zone. We're supposed to engage with the writing, the words, and ideas of other people. But if Plato said it, don't claim that you said it. If a commenter on Nietzsche said it, don't claim that that is yours. And don't, 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 don't go cut, paste from a website and submit it to me. I've been at this a long time. I've been on all of those websites. I contribute to those websites. I've had it happen where somebody has submitted something to me as their own writing, and no, it's not. I wrote, I, I 
wrote that, right? And the thing is, this is the interesting thing to understand about academics. What we trade on in the marketplace is our ideas and our words. That's our currency. If you take that from us, it's effectively like taking our means to clothe, shelter, and feed ourselves away from us. All right, so we're pernickety about this. Plus, it's our intellectual property, and in fact, illegal to do. So, um, effectively, right, uh, Oakland University has, and I know this because I've, I've, I've taken over 40 cases through various hearings um, at the Dean of Students office, um, a, a pretty strong sort of commitment to academic integrity and the defense of intellectual property. Right? You're expected to generate your own original academic work in relation to other people's work. That's, that's fine. You can use so-and-so claims this, and here's what I think about it. That, that is perfectly fine if you're clear about it. Right? But if you're not, I've got a zero-tolerance policy here. And so right off the bat, if you're found to have cut and pasted and like tried to pull a fast one on this, you fail the course. You fail the course. Right? That's my course policy. Right? Not the assignment, not the quiz, not the test, not the forum, not the the course, the whole bloody course. Right? So that's supposed to help you do cost-benefit analysis and realize that, well, I'm better off writing something myself. Right? And you'll find that you're always better off writing something yourself. Always. That's the point. You're, the point of this course is to get good at writing something yourself. So if you're not doing that, you're grabbing what somebody else wrote in order to pass the course, you're not engaging with the course, your skill has your skills haven't you're shortchanging yourself as well. Now, here's what my contract says. This is the funny thing about teaching at Oakland University. I've been a professor at Oakland University for a long time, and Oakland University considers me a great judge of quality. That's my purview. Right? Is this good? Is this not? Does it meet academic standards? Does it meet quality standards? Is it a clear argument? Is it a substantial argument? Is it a well-written argument, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And that's 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 what I grade. But I'm not allowed to determine authorship. Funny, eh? Right? So if I suspect that something is plagiarized, and by suspect I mean I found your sources. Right? I've got it. You wrote X, Y, Z here. I found ABC on Wikipedia or wherever. Right? Cheathouse.com was the first case I came across. Don't go to that site. Right? You buy papers there. Don't do that because you are going to get caught. Um, but nonetheless, right? um, if, 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 if you do that, I've got your source. I've got your paper. It goes to the Dean of Students office, and in addition to, you've already failed the course if it's deemed a case of plagiarism, but in addition to that, they could put you on probation. They could de-enroll you from all of your current courses. They could stipulate that you have to, um, you have to submit all of your work to the Academic Writing Center before you submit it to all of your classes. Right? from now on. Um, they could suspend you for a semester. They could kick you right out of school, so don't do it. You, you see, don't I sound like a great big jerk here? All, right. all I'm trying to do is defend what we're doing in this class. Right? The point is that we read about some ideas, we talk about some ideas, we write about some ideas, we get better at reading, thinking, talking about and writing about these ideas. These are the skills that are important in the world. The weird thing is, these are the skills that are going to help you get a job, succeed at your job, get a promotion, um, you know, argue your position in an effective manner. You know, it's it's important stuff that we're doing here, 
right? So if you plagiarize, you just bypass everything that's of value in the course, and that's why in addition to the fact that it's illegal and an act of theft, um, it, it, these regulations are um, important. Second policy uh, listed in general policies, the missed assignment policy, and this is another one where I sound like a big jerk, but in fact I'm a really nice guy. The policy reads, in the unfortunate event that you miss an assignment, do, uh, uh, assi uh, assignment date due to serious illness or death in the family, you must notify me via email or by telephone message with the department to law office, either before the date or in time in question or within 12 hours of the missed deadline due date. Otherwise, I won't be able to offer an extension. Sounds mean, doesn't it? But it's not mean. All I'm asking you to do is, if you're missing due dates, to have a conversation with me. You'll find that I'm very accommodating. You'll find that I'm going to bend over backwards to help you get through this class. And I'm the, look, I'm, I'm Irish Catholic. And if you've heard of Murphy's Law, the only way that my life makes any sense whatsoever is if I am a direct descendant of Murphy. Anything that can go wrong in my life usually will. I understand that sometimes the sky falls. And I hope and expect that people will work with me if I'm working in earnest along with them to mitigate a lot of this life happening, right? It just requires a conversation. It just requires a conversation. And I'm not asking for a lot. Hey, if it looks like you're going to miss the, uh, miss the deadline, send me an email. And if I see you send me an email, I'll probably give you an extension. Right? If you've missed it and said, oh my God, I missed it. Well, within 12 hours of that, send me an email. Have a phone call. Come by my office hours. Please, somebody come by my office hours. I want to have conversations about ideas with people. But nonetheless, right, um, it, it will work with you. But don't just assume that you have an extension. Just don't assume that. It requires a conversation. That's all. That's all. That policy is there, just like the plagiarism policy, because I've had problems. Like I say, I've had 40 cases that I've taken through the Dean of Students office in terms of plagiarism. I've had a number of students approach me in December about work that they should have submitted at the end of September. Well, it's 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 too it's December 3rd. It it was due September 10th. I can't, I, no, right? At that point has to be the answer, to be fair to everybody who actually did it on time. So, anyhow, um, work with me, I'll work with you. Assignment submission. Um, here's the thing, there are a lot of you, there's only one of me. Um, we're dealing with technology. I know technology can be a little bit daunting, um, especially if you're not used to it. Moodle can be a little bit buggy, I get it, that sort of thing. Um, your job is to get me your assignments, my job is to evaluate them. Right? If I don't have your assignment, I don't have your assignment. There are a lot of you, I can't chase all of you for your assignments. I'm not checking homework or anything along those lines. Get it to me and I'll grade it. If I don't have it, I don't have it. You're responsibility is to get it to me. You just have to, you have to get it to me, right? And if you're nervous about whether or not you submitted to Moodle, send me an email with the same thing that you've submitted to Moodle. It's best to be redundant and sure, right? Make sure also you're going to be sub uh, uploading documents to Moodle for each of your section tests. Make sure it's the right document, right? Because your science homework isn't something that, you know, helps you pass a philosophy class. Well, maybe it is something that helps you pass a philosophy class, but it's not what I'm looking for in a response to my Socrates Plato test, right? So, um, I might even be interested in it. I'm fascinated by it. But, in order to get the grades, you got to get me the right document. So that's your responsibility. That's that's where you have to be careful, and I will be very careful when I assess your document. 
That's that's fair, I think. Um, email. Sometimes I email myself and don't get it till the next day. Right. So keep in mind that email is not instant. Right. Um, I try to get back to emails as quickly as possible. Uh, but like I say, there are a lot of you and there's one of me and I get a lot of emails since I teach these online courses. I try to stay on top of it, um, but I do fall behind from time to time. Um, it, it, I'm not trying to be a jerk. Right? The best way to ask me a question is to come to my office hours, which I have on Tuesdays and Thursdays because I am on campus um, between 12.15 and 12.45 and by appointment. We can book an appointment and talk. Right? But sometimes I fall behind on emails. One thing I do when I fall behind on emails is sometimes I send out a blanket response to everybody. And I do this because I've had 15 of the same question. If, uh, if I've had 15, you know, there are probably 50 people with the same question. So why doesn't everybody get the, uh, the, the right response? Right? Um, one more thing regarding email is get those OU email accounts up and running. Um, I, my email recognizes your email and there's no chance it's going to wind up in the, uh, the spam folder if you've got an OU email account. Um, I do get a lot of spam and random requests from people who just find me on the departmental webpage and decide to email me weird stuff. Um, there have been some um, <laughs> troubling and sort of crazy emails that I've been getting from non-OU accounts. So if I see an OU email and I see a name from my class list that I recognize, you're going to get a response. I don't always respond to non-OU emails because there are a lot of problems doing it. So uh, email me using an OU email account and I will get back to you. All right. um, it, it's not a bad system, really. Um, discuss, discussion forum content policy. Um, there are two principles here. Rather than reading it, I'll just give you the two principles. Keep it topical and keep it classy. Right? Um, if, if, if your discussion with somebody... Philosophy is one of those sort of poorly mannered sort of subjects of discourse kind of thing. We talk about all the stuff you're not supposed to talk about in polite conversation. We talk about religion. We talk about value, so money. We talk about sex. We talk about... Uh, we talk about it all, right? You're likely going to get into debates that get somewhat heated. Now, argue the argument. Don't attack the arguer. That's, that's the rule. So if I see things that are turning into personal attacks, uh, those posts are going to be removed and some sort of sanction right, um, is, 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 is going to be assessed for that in terms of a grade penalty in really severe sort of cases. It could violate the student code of conduct and could be a dean of student's office thing. So keep it topical, keep it classy. You're not going to get points for, hey, when are we getting our exams back? That shouldn't be on the forum, right? What does Socrates say about how quickly grades should be assessed? Well, the interesting thing about that is nothing, nothing, right? So <clears throat> the forums are supposed to be for discussion of the material and nothing else. They're educational resources and not chit-chatty zones, right? You can be polite and friendly to one another, but if that's going on, get each other's personal contact and, um, you, you know, regulate your own debates that way, all right? But these forms are for the discussion of the material. And again, extra credit, no, there's no extra credit. And yes, I know, I'm a big fat jerk. Um, Under uh, the forum posts, a rule of thumb with uh, when I give you a topic is to uh, do two posts, sort of at least, right? Uh, the absolute bare minimum, and this is how you get a bare pass, is to do one on each of them. Make sure the post is substantial. Make sure it's topical. 
make sure it shows that you've thought about this a little bit, that sort of thing. What I would do if I were engaging with these, these forums is to write a post and reply to somebody else's post. That way your bases are covered. Uh, the idea is that you're supposed to have a running conversation about this material, and if I see that happening and I see you participating in such a thing, I'm going to be happy and give you a good grade. Right? Um, so I, I give it to you right here on page two of the syllabus at the bottom of the page. I ask myself three questions when I assign grades for the forms. One, have you posted at least once for each topic? More is better, but have you done it at least once? Two, are the posts substantial? Do the posts offered show an engagement with the material? That is. Three, are the posts timely? All right, this is important because as much as I give you control of your form uh, post right until the end of the semester, I notice when people on December 10th are doing all six of the forum discussions. And remember, the point of the forum, the spirit of the forum, is to have an ongoing discussion about the material. If you're doing it right at the end of the semester, you're not having an ongoing discussion about the material. So uh, try to be as timely and up to date with them as possible. And plus, then you don't have a ton of stuff to do at the last minute in December when everything is due. So um, one last thing to talk to you about. Um, two last things. Uh, oh, if you need plagiarism training, I give you a link uh, to uh, Oakland University has this great sort of online thing called SiteRate. I've gone through it. It's very helpful and useful. I learned things. It's a great resource. You should use it if you're concerned about plagiarism um, and what it is and how to avoid it. This is this is a great resource for you. Um, so uh, there is that. And then the final thing um, that I have to talk to you about is on the final page of the syllabus where I give you my grading scheme. Um, take a second. I usually, in an on-campus context, ask people to take it in and then cue applause, that sort of thing, because the A range goes from 100 down to 80. The B range is in the 70s, the C range is in the 60s, the Ds are in the 50s, and anything below 50 is no credit. All right? That's what it is. Um, this is just shorthand for what an A means, a B means, a C means, a D means, etc., etc. Right? So when I give you a numerical grade, that's what it means. Now below there is something that official from Oakland University's Office of the Registrar, which gives me a letter grade to grade point conversion. All Oakland University ever sees from me is the grade point. That doesn't happen until the end of the semester. All right. So, I mean, effectively, if you've got an A, you've got an A. If you've got a B, you've got a B. And if you've got an A, 86%, that's a straight A. So, you've got a 3.8. That's the way it happens. All right? That's the way it works. So, as appealing as this looks, to a certain extent, it doesn't matter. It's just there to avoid your confusion um, as uh, the course goes on. So, um, your job, just in conclusion here, uh, this week, um, if, which is week one in your tentative schedule, is to engage with the syllabus, course policy, uh, course overview, and a general historical introduction to philosophy. Um, you're doing that by reading over the syllabus while watching this video. Um, uh, you are doing that by viewing my general introduction material, which I've also posted to uh, Moodle for you as well. So um, that's what you're up to this week. Uh, next week, we will start in earnest. Um, so new material uh, will pop up for you. You should read the five dialogues, the sections titled Apology and Credo, and then view um, the indicated video material, which will pop up on Moodle um, Sunday. So Sunday's our new material day, right? 
First thing you have due is September 21st, uh, which is the first of the quizzes, um, which on Sunday um, will be available to you, provided you've viewed the videos. You're going to be, I should warn you on these quizzes, completely lost if you haven't viewed the video material and read the, read the books. Right? So uh, do that, do it carefully. And um, away we go. If you have any questions, comments, lamentations, exclamations of outrage, anything along those lines, please do get in contact with me. I am on campus tomorrow, Tuesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, um, uh, teaching a course. So if you'd like to meet, meet me or meet with me, um, I'm, that's, that's a good time to do it. Uh, otherwise, I look forward to talking to you. Thank you. Um, have a great day, one for each of you.